Hello everybody, I'm Ian Abernethy and in this video I want to share with you a quick bit of bunk eye from a kata which is either known as Kanku Dai, Kasokan Dai or Kashanku. Uh, the sequence we're going to look at is where we start with the hand stacked on the hip, sometimes called the cup and saucer position, the pull and the kick on the elbow and then the knife hand's done at an angle. Now this bit of footage is taken from a two day event I taught in Switzerland. So obviously you're not seeing everything that led up to this clip and you're not seeing everything that came after it. You're viewing it entirely out of context. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but to help you best understand what it is you're seeing, there's a couple of quick things I'd like to explain. So the first thing is the angles in the cutter show us the angle we are attacking the enemy from. They do not show us the angle the enemy is attacking us from. Very important that we understand that. The other thing we need to understand is that the learning order of the kata, these discrete sequences and drills, is not the application order of the kata. We apply them as needed. We don't always slavishly follow the kata. Another thing we need to understand is the kata shows the core element. When we're drilling the bunk eye, we need to add in what I call the dirt, you know, the mess, the extra techniques and everything else, which we do when we do this drill. Final thing you need to get on this one as well is that we did earlier in the day, I showed them how to transition between knife hands because this is one of the lessons taught by the three in a straight row. Uh, the reason this three is it shows how to transition from left to right and from right to left. So to do that, you need a left to right and a left. That's why this three of them. So they've already got this ability to be able to switch from one knife hand to the other. What we're now doing is we're adding in the angular element and showing how the, those techniques could be used if the attempt to strip the grip with a prior technique had failed. And we see this in Cutter a lot too, where it shows this is what to do, and of course every technique can fail, so the very next thing the Cutter shows is, and this is what to do if that doesn't work. Additionally, this is a, a short little drill, you know, there was lots more to it, you've got the big wider context, how you drill this stuff in live ways, the underlying principles, how you adapt and vary, how you take this onto the pads, obviously we can't cover all of that here. If you want to know more about all of the supporting stuff, then obviously check out the other videos, and in particular check out my app. But hopefully this little kind of uh, brief overview, brief introduction will help you better see what we're now going to show you. So let's have a look at this technique from Kanku Dai, Kasokan, Kashanku uh, that I taught in Switzerland. We do whatever we need to do to distract, we're moving off the side, we're applying this lock, we're pulling down from here, smashing it in the head and moving away, which we've done, right? Every technique can go wrong, no technique is infallible. So it's possible uh, during the middle of this, you go here, you go to reach his arm, and as we talk about it, he resists, he drops his elbow in, and uh, it's not working. Now, you still want to be at 90 degrees or as close as you can get because you want to be as far away from the arm as possible. So, then what you do is if, he's, if his arm wants to be bent, keep it bent, straight down onto it. it that might happen. You might get lucky and it may come off. If it doesn't, and we're going to assume it doesn't for now, I want you to then move in with a strike. Then we're okay with that one. So we're just using knife hand again, right? So he grabs the strings, he shots from there, going to move in, and move off the side, has to work, boom, straight into the heel. Let's say I'm really unlucky, because you've done the knife hand already, okay, the only difference now is it's tethered. Let's say you're really unlucky and he manages to block this. He gets his arm up. Well, you know what to do already from before. Right, before, if you remember, we did this, we blocked the arm down, if we blocked it, we guided past and hit in the sequence of three. What I'm now going to do, though, is he blocks it from there, I'm going to change the angle. So in the cutter you've got a knife hand at 90 degrees, then you've got one at 45 degrees, right? So I'm going to come at him this time from a 45 degree angle. Remember what we said about the T and breaking balance. So I'm going to bring this arm underneath as a push here. And then I'm going to strike him here. He's still got hold of me, but now his arms are tied up. Once I'm here again, bang, 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 and he decides to keep it holding me is a bad idea. He's all right, so we're just going to put the knife hands together with that sequence. So if I walk through it again, he swings in, move in, do your thing. Move the side, hasn't worked. Without hesitation, drop your arm down, strike into his neck. Do that a couple of times. When he eventually blocks it, move your arm under, just like we did, but shift to 45 degree. Strike in here. Gives you the 45 degree angle one. Again, continue, bang until he lets go, and then you escape. And if you think about the cutter, it shows you um, here, going one way, then it shows you going the other way. What if it doesn't work, Sensei? Move to an 90 degree angle. What if that doesn't work, Sensei? Hit him at a 45 degree angle. He's like, okay, and then it repeats on the other side. So I'm okay to give that one a go. It's all stuff we've done before, right? It's just a little bit different. Right, give that a go, and then I'll give you the break, I promise you, about 10 minutes ago. Is that okay? <laughs> 